Welcome to my new calculus channel. I am John Gabriel. In this episode, I will be discussing uh, academic ignorance and stupidity, and I'll be focusing on <laughs> on a French mathematician called Henri Lebesgue. Okay. Actually, he is one of my favorite mathematicians who I love to skewer because he was such a fool and I'm going to just talk about one of his definitions in this uh, in this uh, particular video I have actually touched upon it on academic ignorance and stupidity part 3 but <coughs> I'll be giving it some some more attention in this video so Lebesgue is particularly well known for Lebesgue measure. Lebesgue measure. Okay. Uh, Lebesgue measure, by the way, is a bunch of rot. Um, it's based on very ill-formed concepts, has no practical applications, and has done nothing for the advancement of set theory or mathematics. Okay. So what did Le Lebesgue do? I'm going to say le bug or le bag, but I mean the same thing. So he defined L asterisk E to be the outer measure of an interval or a set, actually. The outer m measure of an interval or a set. A a an interval is a set, so it's the same thing. An outer measure of an interval. Okay? very good so far. Now let I be the interval A, B. A through to B. The open interval doesn't really matter whether it's an open closed interval whatever but in this particular case we're making it an open interval because we're looking at the outer measure. Okay. So Lebesgue or Lebesgue defined it as the least upper bound or the infimum by the way infimum infi infimum okay of the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of l I K, all right, and that's equal to B minus A, and L I K is the length of a given interval I K. So this here is just the length of each interval. Now, <coughs> if you divide up any given interval, let's say A B, into a finite number of parts, let's say three parts, then you'd be looking at the length of these three parts, which are all equal, right? So this would be b minus a divided by three. So in this particular case, if we divide it into th if k, if this top subscript here was three, then all of these i, the length of k i one, i two, i three would all be b minus a, b minus a divided by three. But because uh, Lebesgue is using infinity as a subscript, what we're looking at here is, uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that, is the limit, okay, the limit as n increases without bound of b minus a <coughs> divided by n. And of course, we could replace this here. We could actually rewrite this whole thing, by the way. We could rewrite this whole thing as sum of k equals 1. Li oh, not like that. Um, n, and say the limit as n goes to infinity of L i k, like that, yes? And that's equal to b minus a. And of course, in this case here, it's automatically at least up, <coughs> at least up a bound or an infimum. Okay, so let's look at let's think about this particular 
uh, definition. So what Lebeg is effectively telling us is one of two things. So the first thing is he's telling us that we can sum an infinite number of points. Well, where do you see points? Well, let me tell you where I see points. If you take the length of I k where n approaches infinity, you're looking at an interval of zero for a, 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 an interval length of zero for all of the intervals. Because if you divide it into infinitely many parts, then each of the intervals is degenerate. That is, you'll have <coughs> ik, ik, and the length of ik, ik is zero, isn't it? But this here is a degenerate interval. Degenerate interval. Okay, and a degenerate interval is really a point. Okay, it's a point. Do points have width or length or size? The answer is, of course not. They don't. Okay. So, so <coughs> what Le LeBeg is telling us here is that <coughs> by counting the infinite number of points here, we'll arrive at the length b minus a. So he's telling us that the length of a b is equal to the sum of all the points in a b. Now think about it. How can you sum up points? You points are first of all objects which you can't distinguish from anything else. They don't have they don't have a particular size, they don't have a dimension or extent. You can't I you can identify them distinctly. So there's no way that you can sum up an infinite number of points. That's complete and utter stupidity. Infinity is a very ill-formed concept that does not belong in mathematics or any rational thought. Only fools use it. Or another way of looking at this, so there are two ways of looking at this, the, as summing up an infinite number of points, which is absolute junk, or two, if b minus a is equal to k, then 0 times infinity is equal to k. Can you believe that? Well, if you accepted Lebug's theory, you're an ignorant fool. And you've been ignorant all your life. So, if you wish to continue accepting junk theory and advancing garbage mathematics, well, that's your prerogative. But I'm here to expose the truth, and I shall continue to expose the truth, and ignorant and arrogant and stupid academics, for whom I have nothing but contempt and the utter or utmost loathing. Um, there is nothing worse to me than a spineless and coward academic who won't stand up even after seeing these facts exposed but will continue on his path of ignorance and deception. Quite frankly, I would fire over 95% of academics today because they're incompetent and they're not qualified to teach ma mathematics. Mathematics, maybe. But mathematics, no. So anyway, Lebug was a fool. And he also formulated a special integral, which is called the Lebug integral. Uh, also a load of garbage. Uh, don't waste your time on this nonsense. Don't waste your time on set theory uh, where infinite sets are concerned. While finite set theory is useful, infinite set theory is a bunch of rot. And don't forget that George Cantor is the father of all mathematical cranks. Uh, that's all I have to say for this episode. This is the new Calculus Channel. I'm John Gabriel. Hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Until next time.